Hello everyone, Counterspell Hater here, back with another EDH guide. Just like to say, please use my link in the description and donate to Alex's Lemonade Sand Foundation for Childhood Cancer uh, to help, you know, cure childhood cancer one cup at a time. Share this video along with other videos on my channel with other people so they can receive guidance from yours truly and so they can use this link too to help out. Uh, hit the notification bell, that way you don't miss another one of my videos. In the comment section, you can make a request for content, EH content, standard content, Magic the Gathering Arena content, so like highlights of videos uh, for Arena content, for EDH, con EDH content, make sure the content you're requesting is not already being requested by someone else in the comments and has not or have been featured on this channel, such as the Red Terror, in, uh, not Instants and Sorceries, but Goblins. The Red Terror Instants and Sorceries is content that is not already featured on this channel. So you can make a quest for that. Same thing with standard deck tech stuff. Uh, you can make a deck tech for maybe something, maybe like a deck I've been using in Arena, you know? Uh, either way, Positive feedback, like it from you guys, so keep it up. Thank you to the 76 of you who are, who are subscribed, one fell, but uh, what matters is keep subscribing, please. Keep that number going up. We don't want to go down. I like to see those numbers go up. Um, Like this video. I like the book. I like feedback and everything from you guys. Thank you for supporting me up to this point. Thank you for as many of you who are supporting me up to this point. Never really thought I'd get this far. And here you guys are showing me that I was clearly wrong. So please show me just how wrong I was. I want it to be like by a landslide. Um, So like, subscribe, comment on this video. Oh, first come, first serve for the request, so get to the comment section. And it doesn't matter what video you make the comment on, if you're the first, you're the first. But I'll get to everyone's requests eventually. <clears throat> um, uh, so yeah, comment, hit the notification bell, and share this video along with other videos on my channel. So today we'll be doing Shanna Purifying Blade. Probably seen uh, this commander, but uh, it's kind of nothing like what I've built. Well, maybe. Uh, so this is a game life card draw style of deck. So that's all we want to do. And we're in green, white, and blue. So we're in the primary colors for drawing cards and having a lot of mana. And access to an immense amount of mana, so good to start off with. First of all, a good win condition actually in this deck, surprisingly, but when you think about it, not so surprisingly, is Triskaidakaphile. You have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have exactly 13, 13 cards in your hand, you win the game. With Shanna, you can control the amount of cards you draw with it uh, at your end step. Then we have Abundance. High recommendation because instead of drawing cards, you may instead choose land or non land and reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of, of the chosen kind. Put that card onto both, I mean, put that card into your hand and put all other cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order. So you could go find lands if you need it desperately. Authority of the councils. Creatures your opponent's control enter the battlefield tab to kind of slow down the pace of the game a bit uh, to your speed that you may like. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent, an opponent's control, you gain one life. If the flexor is for another win condition with all this life we're gaining, not to mention it gains us life, so high recommendation as well. Uh, Hammer's Archive, another big recommendation. If you would gain life, you gain twice as much life. If you would draw a card, Except for the first one you draw, you need to your draw steps, draw two cards instead. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, 
Oh, something I've been forgetting to mention in my videos. You don't have to use these cards. These are just, this is just a guide to get you going in the right direction. You can use some of the cards featured, none of the cards featured, or all the cards featured. It really depends. This is just to get you going in a direction, like give you a general sense of like what you should or should not put in, you know? Or like how to make do with what you may have at home. Uh, you know, give you that sort of idea. Sun Bond can really buff something up, probably our commander, because it has lifelink. Speaker of the heavens to make angels, because we're gonna have more than uh, more than 47 life. Beladar Sovereign, another big win condition. First off, first off, first off, we start at 40. So if you manage to go unscathed until like turn six and have been hitting on your lands and go unscathed through the turn cycle that you keep Beladar and keep Beladar Sovereign, easy win. Not to mention this has Vigilance and Lifelink. So it's able to block and gain you life. Pretty cool. Archangel of Thune, as we gain life, our entire board gets buffed up. Angel of Destiny, another win condition, gaining us and our opponent's life. And if we've gained enough life or have enough, have 15 more life, at least 15 more, then our strong life total, each player, Angel of Destiny, attack this turn, lose the game. Soul Warden, as creatures enter the battlefield, we gain more and more life. Ageless Entity, as we gain more and more life, this gets buffed up more and more. Shadow Spear can uh, take away Hexproof and Indestructible from permanence our opponent's control for just one mana, which is very powerful when you think about it. Not to mention giving Tremble and Lifelink to the creature. Hold on. Yeah. Where was I? Oh, yes. Sensei's dividing top to manipulate the top of our library. Uh, Cosmos Elixir, because we're going to have a life total that's greater than everyone else's. And if we don't, it's going to gain us life. Which will then draw us cards because of our command. Sarah Ascendant. As long as you have 30 or more life, it gets plus five, plus five, and has flying. And this is a one drop. In Commander, this is extremely powerful. Turn one, 6-6 six, six with Flying and Lifelink. As you start with 40 life. My god. One of the most busted cards, probably. <clears throat> Rocks Faith Mender. Turn four. You gain life. You gain twice that much instead. Nice. Azor's Gateway and Sanctum of the Sun draws us cards and lets us get rid of the ones we don't need. And when it as it transforms, it gains us life, untaps itself, and transforms itself into Sanctum of the Sun, which taps to add an amount of mana of any one color to our mana pool, where X is our life total. High recommendation. Make those Paragon. Whenever you gain life, you may put that many plus plus counters on each creature you control. Do this only once each turn. Now, some people may confuse this with this ability activates only once each turn. This is not the case. You say you gain one life, but you know you can gain more, like 10. Instead of using Nekthos Paragon to put one plus plus counter, you can instead choose not to put those plus and plus counters on your creatures and said gain that 10 life and then use Nykthos Paragon to put 10 plus one plus one counters on all of your creatures. Make sense? High recommendation by the way. So is Trelasara tre tre Moon Dancer. Uh, as we gain life, she gets stronger and stronger, or it gets stronger and stronger, I should say. And we also get to scry one. 
So this allows us to manipulate the top of our library and can help smooth out our draws if we're landlocked, not to mention turn two is quite possible. A Johnny Strength of the Pride can gain us a whole bunch of life, make an Ajani's primate token that gets stronger and stronger as we gain more life. And the mine and the ultimate, which if we have at least 15 or 15 life more than our starting life total, we exile a Johnny's strength of pride in each artifact and creature our opponents control. Don't think I need to go on. Shattered Angels, a hardcore counter to landfall decks that we may, we may be going up against. Because so whenever land earns about under our opponent's control, we may gain three life. And we probably will. Suture Priest. This is great against army decks. Because whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our opponent's control, we can have that player lose one life. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can gain one life. And we will. Blossoming Bog Beast. Busts everyone up at the beginning of, well, when it attacks. And it, it also gains us life right as we attack and gives all of our creatures trample. So, potential win condition. Not definite, but pretty large potential. Most likely will. Because uh, before combat, we'll probably have played a bunch of stuff that will gain us a bunch of life. Lathiel, the, bount the Bounteous Dawn. Lifelink 2-2. Two -two. Uh, at our end step, uh, if we gain life this turn, we can distribute up to that many plus and plus counters among any number of, tar of other target creatures. So buff up our entire board. Accomplish Alchemist. As we gain more and more life, it'll end up tapping for that much more mana. Because it can tap to add an amount of mana to the amount of life we gain this turn. Chasm Skulker. As we draw more and more cards, this gets buffed up more and more. And when it eventually dies, it's going to create us a whole bunch of tokens with island lock, and they're one ones. Archmage Ascension, extreme, extreme recommendation level. Simply because if you have six or more quest counters on it, first of all, to get quest counters, you have to have at least drawn two, at the beginning of each step, you have to have at least drew two or more cards this turn. And then you may put a quest count on Archmage Ascension. And as long as this has six or more quest counters on it, if you would draw a card, you may instead search your library for a card, put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. So suddenly your card draw becomes tutors, which is amazing. Psychosis Crawler, as you draw cards, our opponents are going to lose more and more life, and this is going to get more and more power. Talarian Kraken can untap our stuff as we draw cards or tap creatures. Well, it taps or untapped creatures. Ominous Seas. We get enough for shell counters, we're gonna start making A8s. Nadir Kraken. As we draw cards, if we have the mana to pay for it, we can put a plus and plus and counter. We can put plus and plus and counters onto Nadir Kraken and create one one blue tentacle creature tokens. Shabraz, the Sky Shark, gains us life and puts plus and plus encounters on itself as we draw cards. Goes hand in hand, extreme recommendation. Wire tapping. Whenever we draw our first card during each of our draw steps, we draw another card. And if we have nine or more cards in hand, we may play the exile card without paying its mana cost. High recommendation because we're drawing a bunch. Atmos, all seeing, definite win condition. If this deals combat damage with the amount of cards we're drawing, it's going to be over. Wedding Ring. Now, you may say, Ryan, why would you have this here? Need I say more? Horizon Chimera. I just found this today. I'm like, where has this been? Whenever you draw a card, you gain one life. Not as good as Shabra's, but still pretty good. Foremost Archive Keeper. We run out of cards in our library. If we were not, now if we would draw cards, instead we're putting five plus one plus cards on Foremost, which can suddenly turn, suddenly one minute this will be five, five. Next thing you know, it's a 25, 25 in the air. 
swinging at our opponents for lethal. Laboratory Maniac, definite win condition with how many cards we're drawing. Teferi's Ageless Insight will also guarantee that because now it doubles up our card draw once again. It's, it is, it is, it isn't El Hamid's Archive, but it doubles up the card draw. Body of Knowledge. These two kind of go hand in hand. Because whenever this is dealt damage, we draw that many cards. And I know you can't see it, so I'll read it for you. By Body of Knowledge's power and toughness are each equal to know cards in your hand. Three generic and double blue for an avatar. Cryptolith Right. Creatures you control have tap and one mana, vein one color, two mana pool. Just to pay for our commander's uh, activated ability at the beginning of our end step. Kai Kaideli, chosen of crew fix. Uh, tap, add colors for each card you've drawn this turn. We draw a bunch of cards before our end step. Then with this, we'll be able to pay no problem for uh, Shanna's end step ability. Sages of the Anima. I have but one question. Where's this been my whole life? Like in my career, I guess you would say in EDH. This is amazing. If you're a draw card, instead of reveal the top three cards of your library, I know you can whiff, but still put all creature cards revealed this way into your hand. Oh. For a minute, I thought it was said onto the battlefield. And the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Still pretty cool. Because sure, it doesn't count for drawing cards for like maybe something like uh, Casual Skulker, but this is a swift dodge to the silver bullet that is the new Shieldred. Because now we're not drawing cards, we're putting cards into our hand, which is entirely different from actually drawing cards. Which means Shieldred is not going to cause us to lose a whole bunch of life. But if this straight up put cards onto the battlefield, that would be amazing. I always think that for some reason. Tomorrow, Azami's familiar. If we would draw cards, basically we anticipate. Storm herd. We're gonna be getting a bunch of life, which means this could be a bunch of Pegasus tokens on our battlefield. Next one mentioned, you know we have to have them. With how much life we're gaining. That's going to be a lot we're going to need to pay in order to draw like all the cards we want out of our commander at the beginning of our end step. And I also just found this today, and this is also pretty cool. It's like Sun Bond, but you can target different creatures. Basically, you just have to pay one generic and a white whenever you gain life. I said Watchtower to keep us ahead on lands, Blighted Steep for life gain. Then we have 16 basic planes cards. Supposed to be sixty Yep, that'll, all right. everything's fine now. 16 basic planes cards, 16 basic force cards. <coughs> I'm fine, I'm not dying, I swear. <clears throat> and 16 basic islands. And with that said, this commander, the end of this commander guide, starring Shanna, Purifying Blade. Join Alex's Lenonade Sand. Foundation for Childhood Cancer in their fight against Childhood Cancer one cup at a time by donating using my link, my link in the description. Uh, share this video along with other videos from my channel with other people so they can use my link too and receive guidance from yours truly. Hit the notification bell, that way you don't miss another one of my videos. Uh, 
comment on this video, make an EDH request, standard deck tech request, or an arena content request, like highlights of, of like games uh, for arena, standard, you know, make your request for like a deck I've been playing with as of recently, or like to, for me to build a deck. Uh, you can also make an EDH request, make sure the content you're requesting has not already been featured on this channel and has not already been requested by someone else before you. <clears throat> so like the Red Terror Goblins, for example, that is content that is already featured on this channel, even though the video title doesn't say uh, the video, the way I built it was goblins. Um, but the Red Terror Instance and Sorceries is still out there waiting. So you can fill that slot. Uh, you can fill up an episode with that slot with an EDH request. But I must say, first come, first serve, and it doesn't matter which video you're commenting, whether it's this one or another one uh, that isn't this one. As long as you're first, you know, first, you'll be first, you know. Uh, but I'll get to everyone's requests eventually, just in chronological order. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, oh, and even if you don't want to make a request, Comment on it anyways, leave positive feedback. Really like it from you guys. Comments have been empty for, you, for a few days. And we really like it when you guys comment and you, cause you always leave positive feedback on my videos. Uh, really means something to me. Thank you for those who do. Um, hmm. Oh, and also thank you to the 76 of you who are subscribed, who are subscribed. And to all of you who are thinking about subscribing, please do. And stay subscribed, of course. Um, join me on this journey that for this YouTube channel could be the next biggest one out there. You, my, my fate could pretty much be your, in your guys' hands. Who knows? If you want it to be that way, subscribe. Um, and also like this video and all my other videos, of course. So like, subscribe, comment on this video, hit the notification bell, that way you don't miss another one of my videos, and share this video along with other videos that on my channel with other people. And with that said, I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.